Hi, this is a video on uh, for the Darling Amplifier project and there's one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that the, the, the value of the fuse, the correct sizing of the fuse. So now I'm going to go through the process how we can determine what value fuse do we want to uh, use for any tube amplifier. So for that we need to know two things. Uh, first of all we need to know actually how much total current how much total voltage uh, the amplifier uses and we can calculate that by adding two things together so for every vacuum tube amplifier there's the voltage for the tube heaters so the heaters and there's also the high voltage so so we need to calculate the voltage the total voltage of the filaments and the total voltage for the high voltage supply we add the two together and then we get how many total watts does our amplifier use so for example if it uses a total of 120 watts and your our line AC is 120 volts then it means that we need a one amp fuse right if you are here in the US if you are in Europe and then or somewhere where you have let's say 240 volts AC then you need a half an amp fuse so if you uh, if you know the fuse size for 120 volts it will be half the amperage for a 2 volt 240 or 220 volt application and uh, so now let's see how much uh, wattage, how much power does the Darling Amp use. But before we know the, 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 the total power that it uses, so for example, let's say, let's take an imaginary amplifier and it consumes a total of 120 watts. So, and you would think that one amp fuse will be okay. No, it will blow on the first use. Why? Because when you turn your amplifier on, the tube filaments, so basically that, that's the heater, so let's say like, like this is the tube filament inside your tube, there is the cathode around it, and then around the cathode you, you, you have the grids, so the grids are wound around the whole thing, and then there's the plate. So when you see through the glass of the vacuum tube, then what you see from the vacuum tube is the plate structure. And everything is under the plate so and sometimes the plate has uh, inspection holes on the top or if it's a mesh plate then you can see through it and then you might be able to see the filament but when you uh, turn on your tube like you have like the 12 ex7 tubes or here in our case the 6j4 driver tube uh, it's a frame grid tube and there the plate is this square metallic structure and then you look from the top and then you turn on you can see light coming from inside the vacuum tube and, and that thing that lights up that's the filament so when you turn your amplifier on until the filament reaches operating temperature it's going to draw uh, in the cases of a 6J4 up to five times the current so basically whatever amount of current you calculate here the fuse needs to be five times bigger because if it's just let's say just two times bigger it's going to blow at the first turn on so and and if you have vacuum tubes like let's say like a 300b and 211 or other tubes uh, like 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 the uh, type 10 like the 801 and others which use uh, toriated uh, tungsten filaments there the turn on current can be 10 times what is the normal operational uh, current draw for those filaments and the same thing is true for the high voltage although for the uh, high voltage uh, the inrush is uh, not as prolonged as the heater so the heaters take several seconds so it's like a several second time frame which gives even a slow blow fuse enough time to blow the the high voltages usually especially if you have solid state rectification which is a solid state diode then you have like uh, usually the first 200 milliseconds 
that where you have an immense current draw and then the current draw normalizes and uh, however that there you have a gigantic peak if you have a vacuum tube for rectification because the vacuum tube takes time to warm up there the current draw for the high voltage supply will be very very gradual increase and and there's the first uh, after the diode here's your first uh, capacitor when the capacitor is charging it will charge gently and will not pull excessive current from your uh, power transformer however if you have a solid state diode that instantly gives peak voltage for your capacitor and especially if your first capacitor is of high value and in the uh, darling amplifier the baby darling that c1 that first capacitor here is 130 microfarad so yes that will pull in a lot of current and if we just minimize it for the that calculated minimal wattage then that will blow your fuse the first time so now let's see how do we know what will be the wattage what will be the heater voltage and what will be the high voltage so the high voltage is easy so when we look at the schematics that i gave that i posted it mentions that the b plus will be around roughly 265 volts right and then each power tube the uh, 1626s each of them draws 20 milliamps of current the 6j4s they draw about 3 milliamps of current each and we have two tubes of each so it's like 23 times 2 that equals 46 milliamps total current draw so we have 260 volts 65 volts times 46 milliamps you multiply the two together and you get how many milliwatts so that's like 13,500 milliwatts that is 13 and a half watts total so basically for the darling amp we have uh, sorry high voltage 13 and a half watts now for the heaters we need to look up what is uh, where did i draw it so the 6j4 is our driver tube let's see how much filament current that draws we know from the schematics that i gave to you that this will be a 6.3 volts ac filament so we need the voltage but let's see how many uh, amps does it draw current so here we can look that up online uh, so there we go in in google you can just type in nj7p and then gives you uh bill's ham radio web server he has a giant collection of uh, tube data sheets online and you go for the tube sql database you click there and here you enter the number of the vacuum tube you want to look at 6j4 enter and there we go it gives us the data sheet and it also gives here 8532 that's the preferred substitute for the vacuum tube it's actually a higher grade vacuum tube so you might want to use that if you have access to it and it says it has 0 0.4 amp heater heater voltage heater current 0 0.4 amps so let's see so now we know it's 6.4 amps uh, volts sorry and 0 0.4 amp so we multiply the two together that, that's something like 3 watts right per tube and now we have two tubes so for the heater the two uh, driver tubes will pull together 6 watt right and now let's have a look at the the power tube itself so now let's look it up 1626 there we go did i type it 1626 look up there we go power tube and that's a quarter of an amp for 12.6 volts so and we have two tubes so they together pull half an amp for, from that so that's a total of 6.3 watts so basically 6 watts plus 6 watts twice so we have uh, 
a little bit over uh, 12 watts because it's a little bit more than 6 watts, right? 6.3 plus 13.5, that, that's something like uh, 26 watts, right? And when you look at it, that's awful little. That's one fifth of an amp. Is it that little or even less? Oh, much less than that. Uh, 26 watts, yeah. Because like if we look at uh, 20, 120 watts is one amp, right? Then this uh, 26 watts is roughly one fifth of an amp. That's our steady state current draw for the baby darling amplifier. And now you want uh, to oversize it like uh, four or five times to be sure that when you turn it on, it doesn't blow the fuse. And then uh, as a result, a one amp fuse will be uh, what you want to use for your baby darling amplifier. Uh, you could use bigger fuse, but then it will not protect. So the bigger fuse you use, then uh, the less protection you have, you can go lower in the fuse sizes. You, you can try 0 0.75 amp fuses as well, uh, but then occasionally you will blow when, when you turn it on and, and you got, uh, got the line input voltage at, at its full phase, then it will blow it. If, if you don't get it at the full phase, phase, you get it somewhere like when it's like rising or falling, then you'll be fine. But maybe once in a month, the fuse will pop if you are closer to, to the absolute limit. And always make sure that you have slow blow fuse. This is how they say it. Slow blow. Because there's fast blow and slow blow fuse. Slow blow means that uh, it takes for a while, for a few seconds, for the fuse to blow. If uh, there's a current exceeding the limitation, a fast blow fuse is uh, blows right away. As soon as one amp is, is reached, it goes. And here, with, with this amplifier at turn on, uh, the, it, the uh, current will be around one amp turn on. And if you use a, a fast blow fuse, then probably you, you are keep on popping it like every third turn on might go. So for two amps, use a slow blow fuses and, and, uh, and often you just have to experiment how it works out with your power transformer, input capacitor and your rectification. But for the baby darning, use one amp fuse. Have fun, awesome, bye bye.